Oh, There's something on the screen. I've been trying to clean it off. It doesn't come off. Anyway, that's what I want you to think of, and that is what these stimmers and stuff are doing. They're trying to use the stress of the constant to get the dog doing what they want under the guise that that's making it a better dog. But the reality, any success they're having is despite the stress they're putting it on, on it. Not because of it. That's what you've got to think of. You know, if you're doing pressure release, again, that's all about making the, you know, the, the command, the precursor for the correction. Because you're saying something, and then you're going to put some pressure on there, and then you're going to release it. You know, you've, it's, and I see what I see. I saw yesterday, and I put a sad face. I'm sure these people have unfriended me by now. Um, but they were taking these little five-week-old shepherd puppies and making them walk over a great a wire piece of, like, a pen with squares this big so their legs were falling through and, at five weeks old and saying we're doing environmentals. So their belief is that this environmental stress is going to somehow make the dog a better dog. I would say to that, it, it, if it succeeds, it's despite of that, not because of that. And if you said, well, what would be, how would you prove it? Get, and I, any of you guys that live where they have storm drains have experienced this. Here they've got big storm drains in the street. So there's holes in the grate about this big, but then it's about a six foot drop down. So if you get a hinky dog at all, it goes into a reaction, and I mean, it, they don't only just go up to the edge of the hole. I mean, they like recoil away from the hole, whereas other ones just walk over it. So, you know, they, they you know, the ones I have, they weren't subjected to anything even close to that. That's why I remember it was so interesting when they did it, unfazed by what appeared to be a six foot drop right underneath their feet. So, you know, they're that way, despite the fact I never did these environmentals when they were five weeks old. You know, that what you have to understand is once you add stress, you're changing the decision making. And if you said, well, I'm adding stress, because I understand I'm changing the decision making so that I can interject my decision real quickly. And I'd say, well, that would probably work then, you know, but if you said that's what, and this is what I was getting in this argument with this guy, Ryan, about, you know, that they're seeking stress and, and people are seeking stress. You know, we're told that stress makes you a better person after something terrible happens to you. That's how we console the other human beings. You know, we're saying, oh, it's character building. It's, you know, thank God you've experienced this in life. Now you've learned. And da, 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 da. Dogs are not operating from that. If you said, what do they want to do? Based on what I can see, just move freely through the world. And if you said people don't want to do that, they said, yes. Yeah, yeah, I would say, yes, they do. They, they say, I want to retire and travel. If that's not moving freely through the world, you know, and if you said, well, we've got stress and everything. Yeah, but we're at the point now. We've minimized it, <laughs> you know. I don't have to, you know, we've, it's, it's, there's the least amount of stress that there'll ever be for humans right now until next year when they'll make more inventions to make our lives less stressful. So I think, you know, and I'm only talking about companion dogs. I understand with police dogs and stuff. Yeah, you better let them know if it's a decision between fight and f flight, take a guy out. But then I'm thinking to myself, if you've got a dog that's even thinking of flight as an option, maybe this isn't the best police dog. Because those things are genetically engineered to be, act as a man's bullet. You know, so they're seeking to do that because that's what brings them happiness. They're not saying to themselves, we can wipe out crime. These other humans need to learn. I'll get them. You know, they're seeking to do that. Oh, this is Crash pulling this. Thing. That was Crash pulling the remote now. Now here she is now bringing it to me. <laughs> There's actually one missing, and I'm just hoping that she goes and finds it. So that's what I think you guys can think of. And I, it's something we say to the other humans. You know, when we've gone through something awful. You know, that, oh, it, it'll make you a better person. It's character building. Get in the army. It's character building. It's also awful. <laughs> it's awful. You know, people don't grow up and say, I want to put my kids through a lot of stress. They say, I don't want them to have to go through what I went through. Everybody says that about their kids. You know, so if we were achieving for stress, I want this kid to experience twice the stress I ever experienced. And that'll make him a better person than I was. You know, we want to shelter the things that we love from that. And I'm not saying it's, 
you know, I'm not some pure positive trainer. I'm not. I just understand. And I didn't know this before I got Crash. Because if you said, why does Crash do what she does? Because it, obviously because it makes her happy. There's no other explanation. I'm not making her do it. I didn't teach her to do it. She seems to have taught herself. And she does it because that's what she wants to do. She could just as easily run off. I mean, granted, I've got the recall on her. But, you know, even then, that's not enforceable. That's not something I can enforce. You know, I can call her. It's just like I can call my friends right now. And tell, tell him to come over. I could call George right now and say, George, please come over. But I can't enforce that. I can't enforce that if he comes. It's for his own free will. And he won't because I'm not calling him because he'd have the kids and I can't. I just, as much as I love the kids, I just, I'm too exhausted to deal with them today. So I don't need the stress of kids. You see what I'm saying? So, you know, if I thought, it'll make me a better person to get the kids over here. I'll watch them all day. You know, and they make twice as much work for me. It'll be great. <laughs> you know, I'm not saying that. So, you know, it's not that you don't. Knock it off. You know, again, the stress. It's not the stress that's making me. Uh, I, I just want you guys to think of that. The pressure release is just creating a stressful dynamic, which is forcing the dog to make decisions. And I can tell you the decision they're making with that methodology. Is, i got to get away from these people. Because I understand what it takes to keep a dog with you out in the world. Let's just put it that way. I understand what it takes. And it's not... You know, you could force them to do it, but they would continually be looking for ways to circumvent that. If what they wanted to do was go out in the world, you do have to psychologically convince them that they don't want to do that. But, you know, I don't want you guys to think that, you know, and that's what's wrong. If there's any, if the, if the e-collar motto is first do no harm, then it can't be used constant. It would be used constant in individuals with a high tolerance for pain. In two senses, a high tolerance for one to inflict pain and a high tolerance for nothing but constant's going to stop it. And if you said, show me dogs being stopped with constant on 127, I'll be right back. Bowdy, that black boxer, Andy, the black pit bull. I, I'm, I'm, oh, no, I'm going to go get that video. I'm going to show you how to unlatch a pit bull. It was just a delatching of the dog because it was latched on. It was latched, and I used constant to delatch it. It didn't understand it was me doing it, but, you know. So I'm not against constant. I, and you guys have seen me in action. I was actually to the point it wasn't working, and as a last year, I was running over there to physically intervene to try to save this dog. That's, that's where we were at. I'm not some panicky little cuckoo. I talk, you fight. I was like, mofo, I, I need to intervene. He's going to kill this individual. That, that's where I was at. I was headed that way to physically intervene because I didn't think it, the constant wasn't stopping it. And then it did, it overrode the circuit that this dog was operating on and it did delatch the dog. And I interjected real quick with my recall. And if you said you didn't show me the results of this pit bull lady and let me show it to some international... I'll go get it. I'll go get it. Because that dog was a bullet when I got done. But, you know, that's, that's, that's how scary it was that I said to myself, this dog is killing my client's dog in the water. You know, it's, it's killing my client's dog in the water. I need to run over there. I, you know, I don't sit around thinking that. You guys see, I'm cool. You know, cool as a cucumber. Nothing's phasing me. Pit bulls are fighting. Da, 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 da. I was physically going over there because I felt that was what I needed to do to save this dog's life. <laughs> yeah, you know. So, yeah, you need constant then because I am slow and he was fast. I, I, you know, if you're not looking at a dog that way, and if you said my dogs don't move fast, I'd say they have the capacity to do that, though. So, you know, that you're not factoring that in. Oh, Chelsea, I don't know. That was this summer. You missed the black pit bull. I'm going to go find it. Oh, no, you remember Bowdy the black boxer. Yeah, and again, if you said uh, someone less knowledgeable might not have recognized that, oh, I'd say, oh, for sure, because it was completely silent. And if you said, what's the most dangerous form of biting? Silent biting. <laughs> you know, because you're just going down. <laughs> you're just going down. They're not augmenting it. You know, they're not augmenting it because there's nothing defensive about it. You know what I mean? If you're, you know, 
if you're in that state of mind. So anyway, guys, that's that's what I want you to think of. You know, and if you said stress altered that dog's decision making, yeah, it, it did, it did, and I and I did. I got right in there and made another decision for it, and made it come to me. And the byproduct of that, and that was the very first day I had it, I think. But you may have to use it. And I know Amber, if you're there, I know you're just. Trying to convince me that these dogs don't have a, a, a more of a tendency. But if you said 20% of pit bulls have, you know, 20% of intact male pit bulls will immediate, three to four year old male pit bulls will immediately attack another dog. I'd say, oh, really bad. You know, if you said 2% of labs, I'd say, yeah, but they would have to be really poorly bred because generally they won't. You know, my intact males run with other intact males. They don't do anything. Uh, Talbot runs with Benjamin and Rocky and Eli, who are both studs with multiple, multiple breedings under their belts, run together, and nothing ever happens. I never go out there and say, Mother, I didn't hear anything but the other dogs barking, and that son bitch had him down in a silent grip by the throat. Rocky had Eli down by the throat in a silent grip, vicing him. <laughs> Doesn't happen. Yeah, here's shoe bottom giving me fake kisses for the food. Anyway, that's what I want you guys to think about. You can't be the source of stress because you're always going to gravitate towards that. It's, it is necessary in dog training in certain instances. To, but what you need to understand, it's going to cloud decision making. Once we add stress, the decision making isn't going to be from free agency. Because if I said, I'm sorry, it's, how, how often has somebody said this to you? I'm sorry, I, just, I did it because I'm so stressed out. And then we just take that as an excuse. Okay, well, they couldn't make good decisions because of the stress. The dogs were barking and this and that, and then someone came and the phone was ringing, and I just, I'm sorry, I yelled at you, but it was just the stress was getting to me. And you would just, oh, okay, I understand. I get crazy when I get stressed too. So, you know, I mean, we have to understand that's going to be a byproduct of stress. If we're adding stress to our training, you know, without Pitbull, I added the stress and the stress, the source of the stress was the other dog, and I was sort of the source of the alternative behavior that we suddenly added. But, you know, you can't, that's the problem. People can't say to me, you know, prove it, and me not be able to do it. That's, that's the crazy part. You know, and if, they, if you said, well, it only works at your house, it doesn't. I've got all kinds of videos where it's not at my house. It's just a theory. It's just, you know, it's just operating under certain theory of science, behavior, and technology. And if you said, that sounds like the stupidest way to train dogs ever, then please unfriend me now. And I won't blame you. You know, that's what I tell people. If you can't take me at my worst, I don't blame you. It is ridiculous. Anybody puts up with it. You know, and it's just because I can create content, and I want you guys to do it, too. And, you know, people remind me, you're inspiring people without realizing it. But, you know, if someone doesn't say to me, I love your work, I honestly, I, they can't expect me to place any value on them because I don't know that. And there's other people that say that, and so I devote my energy to them. And it's just somebody, you know, I just, not that I think, you know... Obviously, I'm desperate for attention. Who makes this many videos? <laughs> but, you know, that's what I want you to think of. If, if, if stress was a part of it, if we could truly convince a dog, and I still remember the day I told Mike, I don't, knock it off. I don't want you to get too excited, but I think I might be able to get Crash to do a train to retrieve. And he was so, if he hadn't been so excited about it, I honestly may not have pursued it as much as I did. But I thought, oh, God, I can't disappoint this guy. You know, that I even gave him the idea that I was going to do that. And I got to come through. You know what I did? So, you know, but she's operating under complete free agency. I don't have any ability to force her to do anything. That's the crazy part. So if you said, well, just somehow psychology and your actions is causing it. Okay, well, then let's all do that psychology and get those actions. You know, because it's always going to be, you know, if somebody was going to come and intern for me or whatever, and I was just really making a bust their ass, I can guarantee what they say is, I'm here because I want to be here. You know, you're not making them. They're, they like it, you know. So you've made them believe that they like the stress or something. I think you could do that. But I don't think you have to think of it as we've got to add stress. You've got to be careful. Let's put it that way. You can't make it. You can't make yourself be the source of that because if you said things don't gravitate away from stress, 
they do on the long term. They do, you know, and if we put dogs through things and they've achieved goal, you know, then we say it's a better dog. It's a better dog because it does all these things. But the dog doesn't say to itself, I'm more evolved. I hope the Dalai Lama would like me. I'm a very evolved dog. I mean, they're not even thinking those. They're existing in the moment and seeking from what I can see. Honestly, and if you said wild horses do the same thing, they just seek to move freely throughout the world. And if you just let dogs lay on a couch and eat food and go to the pond all day, they would seek to do something else. And I'd say, no, they wouldn't. And if you said, how do you know that? She's right here, and her name is Shoe Bottom. Because, <laughs> you know, she acts completely in free agency. I can't make her do anything because I have an emotional barrier. Oh, no, look, now I gave her a kiss, she'll run away. Oh, she's gone. <laughs> so I get rid of her. <laughs> I use reverse psychology. Her face is just so cute, though. I understand, you guys. I want to just hug her and kiss her all the time. Oh, my bracelet fell. They're gonna... Oh, Crash is picking it up. Crash got my bracelet. Oh, you little monkey, Crash. She's dropping it. Anyway, I'm going to go out there with Crash, but, you know, that's what I want you guys to think of. If, you know, if we're saying we're using a pinch collar and that's not causing stress, Crash won't read the bracelet. It is. It is. And if you said, how do you know? Because I see so many dogs doing the shake off with it. You know, and if you said they do the shake off with other collars, I'd say, yeah, because they probably just would prefer just to be in free agency. If I just left my front door open and the door to the pond, I would expect and have put automatic feeders up and put webcams. I mean, this would be a good thing. A fishbowl. Biosphere. Biosphere, Mike. How does that sound? We'll put cameras everywhere. I'll move to a hotel on the beach side. We'll have computer automated feeders, everything. We'll have somebody come once every couple of weeks and just see what they do. And if you think they'd be miserable, I don't think they would. I think they'd go down to the pond. I think they'd explore around. I think they'd come back. They'd sleep. They'd eat. They'd go back down there. They'd dig a hole. They'd roll in a dead fish. They'd come back. They'd go to sleep. You know what I mean? They would just live in the here and now, whatever. If one went, they would follow it. If one ran, if, if something ran, they would follow it. <laughs> Maverick got something this morning. It, there was something in you. Know, there must have been palm fronds or something in the ditch because I could hear them rattling. And I'm going to tell you how I... Eh, she bought him. No, because Maverick's all the lighted collars. And now I know he's doing something because Andre, during the run, is doing nothing but watching Maverick. So he's running point on Maverick. So as soon as Maverick starts to go down in a ditch or something, I know because Andre's on a leash and I can tell by how Andre's acting that that's what happened. You know, but if you said, well, if you just let them loose out there in the dark, they would just run around chasing animals. Yeah, that's what they would do because that's what they would want to do, not what I wanted them to do. I could shape that around, make it into a hunting dog, and make it what I wanted to do. You know, and there would be some stress that would involve decision making that, you know, you're going to come back and all these things. But anyway, you guys, that, that's what ended up happening. And if, you know, if people, if I am friends, I want them to know it's not them, it's me. I'm ridiculous. You know, but I just think I understand. Crash made me understand even more. You know, your job is really. To just if you said any of the things that you're doing with these dogs, it's nothing they don't already do. Dogs already walk, they already lay down, they already pick up things. I can say exactly, you know. So you're not really getting them to do anything they don't already do. It's just getting them to think that that's what they want to do. Oh, Tony, I love Shoe Bottom too. But Tony, do you ever talk to Debbie Libby? I think we should give Shoe Bottom to Debbie Libby. She loves boxers, and it would be so much less for me. And I'd be happy because I would know that Shoe Bottom lived at Debbie's house because I love Debbie, and Debbie's a big fan of mine. And Debbie loves boxers, so it would give me, it would be one less thing to do. Don't you get ready to bark at me. <laughs> you would love it at Debbie's house. Oh she'd, oh, she'd get you way more treats than me. Oh, she wouldn't be, oh, she'd get the cheek. Oh, she'd put in a pool, anything for you. Oh, she already has one. Yeah, she'd be fine. You know, I wouldn't worry about that. Crash, on the other hand, I do. Uh, no, she, she's awful. Uh, I do want to have somebody come and work with. Oh, this is what she does. She gets the roll of paper towels 
Oh, it's awful. If I see it, it's like, a, it's, it's like, I feel like I'm a football player around here. I got to run in for the interception when she gets the roll of paper towels because, oh, that's her. That's her. I'm not paying fast enough. Uh, it starts unrolling on the floor and then she starts bringing me every piece of the paper towel. I guess I'm going outside with Crash right now and, uh, Sophia, I hope you're feeling better. Sophia had eight almonds and had anaphylactic shock. On Facebook. And Sophia lives in the UK. Luckily, I went to her cram shows. I was going, Sophia, call 999. Knock it off. And then she was getting all woozy. I was like, oh no, what do I do? I was just getting ready to post on your Facebook. Someone call 999. And then you message me. So, all right, guys, I'll be right back with Crash.